am in Mockport, Indiana at Squire Boone Caverns. Um, this was a property owned by Squire Boone, who you may not know, but you probably know his famous brother, Daniel Boone. Uh, Squire is extremely interesting, and um, he is actually buried in the cave, so we're going to go uh, see his casket, actually. Um, and it's just a really cool cave, and uh, we're going to go check this out. So they have like an entire village set up. A bunch of different log cabins. They do have several outbuildings, like Boone's Kitchen, which I think they have uh, food in there. Looks like they also have a soap shop and a hand-dipped candle shop. There's a classic tourist thing, gem mining. Look at this, there's some goats. What's up, guys? This is awesome. Although I do prefer my goats on roofs, if you know what I mean. After taking a little hike to the entrance, it's time to enter Squire Boone Caverns. This cave has about every formation you can think of. It's definitely one of my favorites out of the ones I've been to. These are called Ringstone Dams. They're all throughout here. These are some smaller roofstone dams. We have larger ones down there. Those are soda straws up there. They form when water runs through their centers and it deposits a ring of calcite around the tips. So this cavern is very unique because of its association to an important historical figure, Squire Boone. He was born on October 5th, 1744 in Pennsylvania. His brother Daniel was born in 1734, so he was 10 years older. And the Boones moved to North Carolina in 1749. At age 15, Squire went back to Pennsylvania to apprentice as a gunsmith, then returned to North Carolina five years later. Starting in 1767, he joined his brother in long hunting trips to the Kentucky Wilderness, which truly was the western frontier at that time and was very dangerous. Daniel and Squire blazed the Wilderness Road through the Cumberland Gap into central Kentucky and settled Boone Station in 1775. Back in Kentucky, the 1778 Siege of Boonesboro caused Squire to get injured and he had to get a rifle ball cut out of his shoulder. He got a lot of serious injuries throughout his lifetime. After the siege, Squire decided to move to the Falls of the Ohio, which would later become Louisville. Then in 1780, he led 13 families in settling Squire Boone's Station, the first settlement in Shelby County, Kentucky. This settlement also got attacked by Native Americans in 1781. In this attack, he got shot in the arm, and because of that, his right arm was an inch and a half shorter than his left. Because of the destruction, all but the Boones and one other family left to relocate to a different settlement, but they all got killed in the Long Run Massacre. In 1787, the brothers were here in southern Indiana, and they found a way into this cave. By the light of their lanterns, the Boone brothers explored this cave. So what's really cool is that you're walking in the footsteps of Daniel and Squire Boone. They were experienced splunkers, but as this cave is pretty freaking cool, I bet they really enjoyed it in here.
this part of the tour gets very slippery as the catwalk goes directly over the stream which runs through much of the cavern. That is a drapery formed when drops of water trickle down the undersides of ceilings, leaving deposits and lines that turn into this formation. Squire then tried to become a land locator for wealthy land speculators, but it didn't go well and he ended up losing just about all of his property, including the station, and he had to settle elsewhere. He did serve in the Virginia legislature in 1789 and 1790. He was the primary sponsor of the Charter of Louisville. In 1790, Squire would again be right by this cave when he was attacked by hostile Native Americans. Since he and his brother had previously discovered an entrance, he was able to hide in this cave and it saved his life. Then he tried to settle near present day Vicksburg, Mississippi. Then he moved in with Daniel in Missouri for a while and finally settled here, south of Corridon, Indiana in 1804 with his family. He purchased a large tract of land near this cave, which he and his brother had discovered and which saved his life. Since he was able to obtain the place, he considered it very sacred. He would live at the settlement for the last 11 years of his life, and when he began suffering from dropsy, he began to construct his own casket and instructed his sons to bury him within the cave. He died on August 5th, 1815, his sons did follow through with his wishes of being laid to rest in the cave, and then they sealed up the entrance. His remains were left alone for a little while, but as he was kind of a celebrity at the time of his death, people did break in, relic hunt just about all of the original casket and even some of his bones, but a lot of the remains were left. When the cave opened in 1973, they still didn't know where the remains were until a visitor who had claimed to have seen them in his childhood was able to give directions to locate the remains.
and this is the resting place of Squire Boone, set up right at the end of the tour. His bones were placed in this new casket in 1973, and there's also a federal issued gravestone placed next to it. You don't often get to see the casket of a famous historical figure, let alone see it in an amazing storied cave, so this is definitely a unique and interesting place to visit. Those are some creepy albino cave critters. At the end, you climb up this very long spiral staircase back up to the general store. There are some taxidermied bats. There are bats within the cave, unfortunately didn't see any. These pictures show Squire Boone's bones, so that's what is inside of the casket. All right, so this is the original cave opening. So this is where uh, Squire and Daniel Boone would have escaped uh, the Native Americans. And this is originally where uh, his casket would have been brought down to be buried, and then his sons would have sealed up uh, this entrance to the cave. Very adamant about not wanting you to go in, um, so I guess I won't. Um, but wow, original cave entrance. Squire Boone, Daniel Boone, right here. Oh yeah, Squire Boone also uh, performed the first white marriage in Kentucky and preached the first sermon in Louisville and also built the old Goshen Church in 1807, the first Baptist church in Indiana. Right by the cavern is Boone's Mill, 1809. This mill was actually built and operated by Squire Boone in the early 1800s. So it's really amazing that it's still standing, and it was run by the waters from the cave. These are foundation stones hand carved by Squire Boone. Towards the end of his life, he kind of became a folk artist. He carved these in the foundations of his home, the mill, and also he had some buried with him in the cave. Back behind the grist mill, it's like the water flows over here into like a uh, gross whirlpool. Oh, that is a whirlpool. It's a pretty large grist mill. Really neat. Wheel isn't running, but that's all right. So this is where the water exits the cave. I found the spot where this happened. You can definitely feel the uh, cold air, the wind drafting out. Feels pretty nice over here. All right, so that was Squire Boone Caverns, a really interesting place. If you like this video, I have a bunch of other videos at a roadside attractions, some caves, museums, all sorts of stuff, so please go check those videos out, and thanks for watching.